Uh, hope, yeah, we're, we're really not. sorry we didn't get you a cake already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully not. It's in the mail. It's on the way. <laughs> the best cakes yeah. are, are brought with the mail. Okay. Um, so uh, where did we end uh, last session? Uh, we had Vasero clutching uh, the spongy staff. Uh, and we had vine blights pouring into the winery. Um, and uh, you guys focused on releasing uh, Vasero from his comatose state, uh, or at least protect him from uh, the blights uh, with Ramil levitating him and um, Enoch who managed to uh, jump on uh, Vasero and break the stuff. Um, and when you broke the stuff, all the blights just uh, withered and died. Uh, at that uh, very uh, moment. Uh, and Vasero was coughing up sand and dirt and mud uh, because uh, while being comatose, uh, he saw this vision of a tree uh, and he got pulled into the ground by the, the tree's uh, roots. Uh, obviously, the Martikovs were thrilled uh, to learn that you defeated the Blights and the evil druids uh, and uh, you even saved uh, their baby. Um, and uh, Davian, when he saw the broken stuff and Enoch uh, holding it, he, he basically, um, uh, he was very worried and he tried to interrogate you if you saw any vision or if you saw the tree um, uh, from which the, the stuff uh, came from. And he explained that the, the stuff uh, contains this uh, soul possession, uh, possessing uh, power and he was worried that it will possess you or, or transform you in any way uh, but he uh, examined you and didn't see anything and uh, none of you uh, offered any uh, other explanation so he concluded that uh, you were protected uh, somehow um, in which you replied that uh, it was the morning lord or uh, something of a sort and there was uh, this short argument between the two of you um, and uh, basically, after that argument, Davian told you his family story, uh, that his uh, bloodline is able to turn into Raven, and th this ability doesn't manifest with uh, each and every family member. It sometimes uh, skips a generation. Um, and he told you about uh, Strahd scorching the sky, banishing the sun, and uh, about the magical gems that uh, allowed his family to uh, revive the vines and, and uh, basically produce wine for free and distribute it for free to keep morale up as they try to oppose uh, Strahd. He also told you about the holy symbol of the raven uh, that his father embedded into a cask of their finest wine. Uh, they don't have any more of that wine left and they shipped this cask to Ravenloft. Uh, they hope that uh, if Strahd will uh, keep it in the castle, uh, in his castle, the uh, holy symbol will, I don't know, emanate some positive energy and uh, maybe banish the darkness from the castle. Uh, obviously, that uh, didn't work. Um, he also told you that Orwin was on watch when the first uh, gem was stolen, something uh, like 10 years ago, which led Orwin to move to Valaki and open an inn there. Um, and he told you that the second gem was stolen uh, just a couple of days before you arrived. Um, and upon seeing the staff, he believed that the druids sent by Strahd are planning something uh, wicked. Uh, something that, uh, probably a ritual or something like that. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't know what exactly, and he hoped that you would tell him, um, at least Enoch would tell him uh, after... Uh, touching the the staff um, he basically urged you to investigate but you decided to rest um, and uh, this had some consequences as uh, this huge 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 uh, tree-like um, creature stepped into the valley and uh, upon Strahd uh, pointing at the winery just attacked um, the, the Martikovs and uh, you. And uh, you had this monumental uh, battle against uh, this uh, tree. 
uh, and eventually you managed to defeat it with I think everyone uh, on board including Davian and his sons that were uh, cast aside as mosquitoes uh, but uh, you uh, gave it all and managed to defeat this uh, creature and Again, Davian was very, very grateful, uh, and he told you that, uh, aside from him, um, only the infant has the raven blood in it. Uh, Orwin is dead, and Falcon was not seen uh, for a long time. You are actually the last one who saw him. Um, and he um, promised to answer your call when it's time to fight uh, Strad. So you gained his, uh, you gained him as an ally, um, and that basically concluded one of Madame Eva's uh, prophecies. Um, and they helped you rest through the night. They gave you food. They gave you uh, wine, and uh, they kept watch uh, as you slept. Uh, but for some reason, everybody fell asleep. And uh, early in the morning, a scream woke you all up. And when you uh, uh, ran to Stefania's room, um, she was screaming that her baby, uh, the infant, is, is, is gone. Uh, it's, she's gone from the cradle, only some uh, blood marks, uh, stained uh, marks on the cradle. This is all you can see. And as you talked uh, around and looked around, you also noticed that uh, Vasero is gone. So, um, what do you do? Can I do, um, first of all, how much do I know about what happened? Uh, you know. Wait. What? You think you know. I think I know, okay. Yeah. Can I do an investigation check to figure out where he is? Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, Davian is... Uh, distraught and his two uh, uh, son-in-laws uh, also are very uh, agitated and they all scramble outside to search for uh, the baby uh, crit 25 oh my god natural 20 plus 5 um, you think that he headed to the vines huh. <clears throat> um See, who do, I, who do I trust? I'm going to pull Davian aside and I'll say, don't worry, Davian. Whatever happened uh, to your granddaughter, clearly Vicero saw it and he's on the case. He's investigating. Um, awesome. That, that is actually awesome. Uh, I need you to roll uh, your uh, bluff or whatever. Oh, no, I'm telling the truth. Oh. I, I actually believe that. <laughs> I couldn't believe that Vicero was doing anything other than that. I, I honestly believe that that's what he saw something. And I, I will accept that. Okay. <laughs> you need it's to roll your gullibility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's totally in my nature. <laughs> um, great. Okay. Um, if, uh, once I notice um, where uh, I think Vicero might be going, mm -hmm. I um, take um, Aramil aside and I say... Um, Hey, come with me. Come on. I think I know where he is. Uh, and if you try to tell the others, I'm, I just like, wait, just be quiet. Just come. Okay. I, I'm, go I'm coming after you. Yeah. Is he going to ride the handlebars of your broom? Uh, I think I'm just, I'm, I'm carrying my broom as a walking stick right now. <laughs> okay. Not, not going, uh, not using it right now. Okay. Okay, so uh, Gary and Aramil, uh, they whisper to each other and they go out. Um, Nelfane and uh, Enoch, Mouse, what do you do? Uh, well, Mouse uh, will also uh, investigate. It's, where is it? Oh, yeah, that's great. 11. Okay. Um, uh, well, I, I can look for tracks. Yeah, he's uh, Moses is going to go to Vicero's room. He's not as trusting as me, and and just do this investigation there, see what he can find. Okay, um, and Nelfane, you want to search tracks uh, where? Um, uh, around um, uh, the crib, and I okay. can have my bear assist me, and like see if I can uh, track the bushmel with my bear. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Romeo, go <laughs> smell, search. Okay. Yeah. 
so I'll, I'll I'll roll survival with advantage since I have my bear helping me. Okay. If that's okay. Yes. Oh uh, well, thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A um, bit better. You and uh, Mouse basically uh, go uh, in circles between the crib and Mouse's room, um, and you don't find a lot of tracks, but you do uh, realize that Mouse. Um, headed outside. Vasero? Uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, Vasero. Yeah. yeah. Vasero headed outside. Um, if they if they went to my room, they might find like some some scribbles, of some some sort of mark. I don't know. Um, like that maybe. Okay, you know what? Um, yes, uh, you actually do find. Uh, this parchment uh, with some scribbles on it, but um, one of the scribbles uh, caught uh, your uh, eyes, uh, Nelthane. Uh, it's a it's a pentagram um, with some other uh, runes uh, abo- uh, um, around it. But the the interesting uh, bit is um, you are not sure this is uh, Vasero's handwriting. Does Mouse see it as well? Like, do you show Mouse nothing? Uh, yeah, uh, and you also, and I say, like, okay. oh, uh, we, we I'm gonna make a religion check. Okay. Oh, oh 11. <laughs> uh, we, we should have uh, Aramil look at this. Where, where, where did yeah. he go after? Aramil? Uh, it's in the bathroom. <laughs> it's in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, we found strange uh, scribblings. Uh, clearly not good stuff in his room. And now Aramel and Gary are also missing. Davian appears uh, in the doorway. Jesus what Christ. are you doing? <laughs> what is this symbol? And then his eyes go wide as he realizes uh, what's going on. Do you recognize yeah. this symbol, Davian? I've never seen it before, and I, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not our friend's writing. So maybe whatever happened to your granddaughter also happened to our friend. Uh, he slowly approaches. The camera pans to Aramil and uh, uh, Gary, <laughs> and you two uh, are searching the vines for uh, any clue or any uh, sign. Of your missing friend, uh, I need you to roll perception. I'm going to send uh, my owl to take a look from above as well. Okay. I can send my weasel. Okay, I got a 15. Your weasel <laughs> should ride his owl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like jumped down with a little parachute. Um, I got an eight on my perception, please, by the way. Please do that. Eight. Got a 19. Okay. 19. Uh, that's the owl or your own perception? That's why oh. I didn't check the owl yet. Okay. I, got it. I don't know. How, how do I roll for my weasel? I actually don't know what I need to add for the owl, but I rolled a 13. Okay. That's fine. I'm going to find out. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> the morning mist is still uh, uh, crawling and uh, uh, and clinging to the ground as you two uh, search the vines. Uh, the owl flutters and disappears above. Um, and uh, uh, it heads uh, basically uh, to to the other side uh, from which you are um, searching to cover more uh, ground. Um, And you then uh, identify um, a naked foot uh, lying on the ground. Uh, It's something like uh, 50 feet um, from where you are standing, uh, and you do see something um, as the mist part. Uh, and then climbs on this uh, naked feet, uh, you do see some drawing uh, carved into the mud. Uh, the mud has, uh, um, uh, how should I say, dried up uh, around, so the, the marking is uh, is still clear, but you're not sure what the marking is. Try to uh, investigate it. Um, do you want to do it from afar or uh, up close? I know, I'm going to get up close. In the meantime, while, while getting up close, I'm asking Gary why the hush hush. Why can't we? Why didn't we call the others? Um. I, I think Gary just says um. 
I'm not sure exactly how the, they'll react. To what? To I don't know. Uh, do I know exactly what's happening, or do I? I'm getting an inkling of what's happening. Yeah, M- mind oh. you, I was very, very drunk, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you think you know, and uh, I might ask you to roll your uh, deception unless you tell the truth. But uh, up to you. Um, um, owls get a plus one for their wisdom, and they have advantage on perception checks for sight and sound. Wow. By the way. Cool. Nice. I don't okay. know about weasels. Uh, I would tell them. I would just say, yeah, with deception, I would say, I don't know. I don't know what uh, what happened, and I got a nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this is where I rolls the uh, insight. You can roll your insight, insight to right? see. Okay, insight. It's well, it's pretty crappy. Yeah, I believe you. Okay, and as you uh, kind of, uh, you know, relax and accept your friend's uh, explanation, you step into something uh, soft, spongy, and wet. And you look down and you see just right next to this bare feet, which, by the way, obviously, uh, is the is the messed part, you can obviously see uh, Vasero's naked body. Um, you step onto something small, um, unidentifiable, uh it's chopped up grounded sliced and um uh massaged uh flesh around yeah. this this you know intestines uh lungs livers uh, but you, you 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 cannot identify what is it even and you is can it, um... see and you can see a Vasero lying in the middle, sprawled in the middle of this pentagram, holding a knife, uh, his red knife, uh, in one arm. Um, the camera pans to uh, Enoch and Nelphine. And uh, Davian uh, approaches you and says, You lied. This whole time, you lied. You didn't touch the stuff. Your friend touched it. He now belongs to Strad. He took the baby. Am I mistaken? I, I have no idea if he took the baby or not. I'm assuming that whatever took the baby also took our friend. Uh, I did touch the staff, but Balder protected me. Uh, yes, we, we did not tell you that he also touched the staff. And he says, what does that mean? If Yolanda is dead, he pauses and then he looks up to you. I vowed to give you my help. Without this vow, I would have killed you here and now. We will search for the baby. I hope for your sake and for mine that she is well and then he explodes into this huge gray raven feathers beak claws and everything and just flutters out of the window uh cracking and crackling and you can see this cloud of other ravens join him and start they start to circle uh, around the vines. Uh, you get a sense, and Nelfane can confirm that, that uh, he's looking for uh, the baby. All right, well, we need to find him before they do, figure out what's going on. Nelfane, can you track him outside? Uh, I can do my best. I can also talk to the ravens if they're like normal animals. Yes. Then I can, so I'll... Um, hey, yo, uh, Ravens, uh, could you help me out if you spot something? Let me know. Uh, uh, preferably it, before you talk to your master. He's not his, his right state of mind right now. So, for his protection, could you like let me know first? Um, uh, to find something? Roll... Mouse and I are going to run outside and start looking around. Okay, so um, uh, a- Mouse is, is running outside. Uh, Nelfin, I need you to roll your uh, persuasion. 
uh, as you talk to the ravens and, and suggest that they will help you instead of yeah. their master. Ooh, 19. 19. So uh, a flock of, of raven, a couple of them uh, veer toward you and they start to um, cackle as they, uh, as they flutter around. And indeed, they um, point out uh, with their pattern of flight uh, a certain point in the vines. Uh, obviously, um, you think that the Martikov uh, hasn't searched there yet. I'll rush over there then and bring Enoch and Mouse along with me and my bear also. Okay. We'll follow. So you all uh, basically unite, uh, and as they are, as you are running toward uh, where Vasero is lying, Vasero, you wake up. Um, you're drowsy, uh, confused, uh, but uh, and and it takes uh, some time to uh, get a bearing on where and. Uh, where you are, uh, but you see Gary and Aramil um, above you. And um, do do I know what happened? Or? You don't remember a thing. I don't remember a thing. Okay. So you do I'm, remember I'm, uh, Gary suggesting some, putting some ideas into your mind, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, G Gary, what happened? Where where am I? Um, what, what, what have we done? And um, at that point, I, the, the, the other group members uh, arrive. Yeah, and I'm, I'm starting exactly like I just did. What is he talking about, Gary? What happened? So, um... Uh, Sarah, what did you do? I, I don't remember doing anything. Actually, I... Well. His dagger. So can you tell me what I see when I come into this? So Do I see chopped up baby on the ground? You see uh, chopped up something on the well, ground. Well, there'd be very little of it if it was a baby it's, <laughs> compared to some other... It's, it's a blob of flesh, this uh, oh, size. Uh, and yeah. it's uh, so chopped up, uh, uh, beaten, uh, sliced up, uh, gnawed upon... Uh, you, you, there's nothing to identify there. Um, and you see Vasero lying naked, confused, still clutching his dagger, with Aramil and Gary uh, talking above his body. And he's lying in the middle of a pentagram that he carved into the mud. Okay, I'm going to cast Protection from Evil on uh, Vasero. Done. As soon as I see this, uh, I'm certain that that dagger is what's causing this so the benefit of that um the target also can't be charmed frightened or possessed by um uh, certain types of creatures celestials elementals fae fiends and undead okay yeah but what if it's already possessed that's a good question but i don't know I'm yeah just <laughs> doing the best uh, i can yeah. <laughs> um i'll i'll turn to yeremy and my bear uh, like and um hmm, could you like smell that to see if it's human at this blob of flesh and please tell me it's not human <laughs> um, i'm not sure if they actually can detect that by smell but okay um anything you want to say uh vasero as you see um, the bear uh getting close to this uh, lump of meat well, the, the only thing I remember from last night was that um, me uh, uh, G Gary told me about some some warlocks that draw their powers from sentient weapons, and it happens that that this dagger might be some m might be one of them. So we kind of talked about the the kind of things you have to do to make a and draw upon their powers, but this, uh, I, I wouldn't have done this. And <laughs> the, as you the, say, the, as the you say, we, uh, most the, the, the things that we read um, were a little bit more pain. Uh, and the, as soon as you finish saying that, I would say we need to get out of here. Probably. <laughs> Mouse wants to cast minor illusion on the little bloody blob to make it look like mud. 
Okay, the, the bear uh, approaches it, it turns into mud, and then... Um, and he's going to start... Is there like a pentagram carved in the ground? Is that what's yes. going what? He's going to start kicking it off, like covering it up. Um, are you still lying on the ground, Vicero? Well, I'm, I'm getting up right now. And I wanna, um, I wanna try to like telepathically like ask my dagger <laughs> if he if he knows what happened. Um, you reach uh, and uh, concentrate and uh, connect with the, the dagger, and you can all see uh, Vasero um, uh, fade out uh, mentally. At least he's 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 got very focused and uh, concentrated. Uh, at this point, a huge raven drops from the sky. Um, I would like to, while he's concentrating, try and disarm him. Okay. Um, go for it. Um, advantage. Davian, uh, yeah, do it. I don't even... How do you do disarm? I can't remember. Uh, I don't just think uh, the thing it's in the rules. Oh, unarmed. Except if you're a fighter, then you can do it. If with one of the maneuvers, but... Yeah you're, yeah, you're trying to uh, get the, the dagger out of his so head. So, I'm proficient with unarmed, uh, so if I have to make an attack roll, it's... Uh, oops, that's the wrong character. 16... 22. Uh, okay. For the attack, and then do a strength check versus something. Is that the way it would work? Um, you tell me, Vasero, the, the weapon, is it considered... Um, do you have any abil special ability that uh, prevents anyone from disarming it, or can you make it go no, away? Not or um, I don't think I have any special abilities to to make it stick to my hand or something like that. Okay, so make a dexterity so, uh, saving like throw. Yeah. Okay, all is safe. <laughs> I just rolled a three, so um, <laughs> modified that's a ten. Okay, so. Uh, Enoch, you managed to uh, uh, slap the weapon. Uh, the dagger just uh, flies and lands uh, on the corners of one of the uh, pentagrams that a mouse just erased. Just uh, it lands uh, point first, and the the mental connection uh, breaks. At this point, Davian uh, now uh, reformed as um, a human approaches all of you and he raises his hand uh, and it starts to uh, glow in this uh, orange-like um, halo around his hand and he starts to mutter um, at this point Ramil, your recognize. owl uh, notice uh, notifies you that a rider is approaching from the road mm. what kind of rider an elf a dusk elf. Okay, guys, there's a there's a rider coming in, an elf. Um, what is um what is Mardikov doing? Oh. Um, he is casting a spell. Uh, what does the, the remind me the nature of the connection you have with the owl? Can you see through his uh, through its eyes? I can try. If it's uh, up to hundred feet from me, then yeah, I can try. Yeah. You want to try and do it? Sure. Okay. I mean, it, it doesn't need a roll or anything. It's oh, you I just, can, you just. I, I, I can, I can just do it up effectively. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, roll uh, your perception as you try and uh, look through the the bird's eyes. Yeah, I got a seventeen. So, with the bird, it's eighteen. Okay. Uh, you see that the uh, this rider, uh, a dusk elf. You can see that his uh, complexion is dark. Uh, but not draw dark, uh, brownish uh, dark. Um, he's covered with a cape and this uh, magnificent uh, blade on his hip, and he holds this package wrapped up in his arms. Okay. Um, I, t I tell you guys what, what I see over there. Um, I think 
maybe we should uh, try to take care of the dagger before that yeah, before that rider arrives so uh, what do you say it. as as damian as davian is about to cast his spell do you want to interrupt it with something or oh, you just i wanted to right. see what it is davian there's a, there's a rider coming in here <laughs> there's, a, there's there's a package coming here and i think your baby might be in his arms okay i need you to roll um just a dexterity check. Let's see if you uh, do it before uh, Davian goes Ooh. off. I got a 20. Oh, Natural, amazing. Natural 20. Oh, amazing. So as the spell uh, takes shapes, uh, your words penetrate his concentration and then he <laughs> uh, swallows the energy back. Um, and he just stands there dead silent. Um, the rider... Show? Yep. Okay. Sorry, I, won't, I point to where the rider is coming from, so that he can take a look. Okay. Um, the rider takes its time to approach you. He does that uh, majestically. You can see him, you know... I like this guy. 100... <laughs> he uh, an entrance. Yeah, 150 feet, uh, and slowly, slowly, slowly approaches you. Do you want to say Stand or do awkwardly. something? <laughs> I, I, I have my bow out at this point, and... Not pointing it at anybody, but I have an arrow ready to knock it, and I'm keeping a close eye on Vesero. Okay, Vesero. Um, not so much the rider. Guys, anybody have an idea, an idea how to take care, how to eliminate a dagger? I mean, what? Why, least... why, why do we want to eliminate it? It's... I just want to make it, it disappear. But... Yeah, I'm not sure about that anymore. The, 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 the rider will have the baby, probably. I mean, I, I I wasn't talking with it about killing a baby or anything. We were just, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Sarah, you haven't been yourself lately. Yeah, you phase in and out from time to time, yeah. holding your dagger in weird ways. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm I'm just concentrating really hard when when I'm <laughs> trying to talk to it. It's it's not that easy if you're you're not that powerful. I think it gets easier with time. So it's stuck in the ground right now? Yeah. Um, Part, partly? Yep. Like blade first? Mm -hmm. So uh, Mouse is going to attempt to like stomp it deeper into the ground and then kick it and try and break the blade. Okay. <laughs> well, the ground is muddy, so I doubt that'll do anything. Wait, wait, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> negative Nancy, enough. <laughs> You want to go over and pick it up with your hand? I can, yeah, no, I can try you. picking it up with a mage hand and keep keep holding it like 30 feet over Vasero for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just worried that everyone else is going to see it and wonder. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, hey, be, be, before we do anything, let's let's fi nice. figure out what happened, okay? Let's let's not jump to conclusions. <laughs> no, I'm going to jump I, kick. I mean, I, I don't really know what what happened last night, but um, the plan was just that that. I, I, I formed a connection with the blade to draw upon its power, and I I don't think we did anything too bad. I think as you maybe as you maybe glance at Gary for confirmation, I think Gary this entire time has been um, just sort of stunned, and he's not his target himself, uh, and he keeps looking at the pile of mud, uh, thinking about like, this is not how I went for me. <laughs> Gary, this is how it bad. went for me. But, but did, Gary, he... you you know you know how how these kinds of kinds of things work. You helped me figure it out, right? Tell, tell the rest of the group it it didn't involve killing a baby. Armel is giving Gary role. a very sharp look at the moment. Moses' attack roll was a ten. Is that enough to hit his motionless dagger? Um, so he managed to kick it, uh, uh, you know, feet uh, <laughs> to to put it into the ground. But as he lifts. Uh, his feet, the dagger just thup, uh, flies from the ground and thup, lands uh, in Vasero's like arm. Mm -hmm. My arrow is like slightly knocked <laughs> out. Like, just, pull, just pull back a little, still down, just pull back like a little. And the rider uh, uh, at this point uh, arrives and he looks at uh, each and every one of you, uh, you know, concentrating on each and every one of you, including Davian. And then he says, There is a naked man among you. What's of it? Um, this is how we roll. 
<laughs> it's not that cold. Yeah. We realize. You have the baby, right? Show the others. You have the baby. He slowly unwraps the um, the cloth, uh, and indeed, you see those two tiny arms, uh, and you can hear Stefania. Oh, my baby! As I think Gary, you, you hear a breath run out of Gary's mouth. And he's just like, oh my god, thank god. It's like <laughs> tears welling up in his eyes. Uh, yeah. so I'm going to approach the rider and say, I don't know who you are, but please give us that baby. Mm -hmm. And, and like, where did out. you find that baby? And uh, maybe give it to the mother who's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby of... first, then explanations. Baby first. <laughs> he uh, but... looks at each and every one of you. Uh, turn his horse just a tiny bit and hands the baby to uh, Stefania. Perfect. Now we're going to try to slowly grab the, try and grab the rein of his horse. Um, and his horse doesn't really like it. He goes something like, no, <laughs> uh, to steer you out of it. I don't want to get bit by a horse. Probably go berserk and headbutt it or um, something. The, the uh, elf looks at you as if you try to touch his sister when he was present. <laughs> it, it, just shocked. Uh, and his hand almost, uh, almost reaches to his blade, but then he reconsiders and says, You are strangers here. Yes. So we don't know who you are or how you got that baby. I think it would be very helpful if you would explain, sir. And, and if and by any chance you know how this guy got naked, we'll also be happy for an explanation for that as well. <laughs> yeah, how are you involved with this naked guy? <laughs> oh, no. I think, uh, I think Gary remembers that part. Oh, it's... how are you involved with this naked guy? <laughs> Those are how much did you drink? Secrets. <laughs> secrets. It's part of the ritual. There was a goat and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there was. Now it's just a pile of... Uh, yeah. And uh, the, the elf uh, looks around and, uh, and says, This bear eats mud. Uh, <laughs> and then you, you can see the bear... <laughs> <laughs> Good, excellent, eat it all. <laughs> uh, that, that's yeah, not mud. That's something else. He Someone looks at you and says... Around. Mouse gives you an elbow. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it is mud. mud. <laughs> so back to the original question, sir. Who are you and how did you come across this baby? Um, he says, my name is Savid. I was looking for a missing Vistani girl in the woods when I saw this, or... Uh, heard this baby weeping. I found her in a wolf's den. Since uh, I'm gonna make an intuition or insight check. Yes, as you're 18. inciting. Yeah. Um. You think. Uh, you think he's telling the truth. In a wolf's den. Yes, sir. Was the uh, wolf there? No. Both How far is it from here? Not very far. Near the ruins of a Grinvost. Blessings of the morning, Lord, upon you. Thank you for returning this baby. Can you lead us to where you, you found the baby? Yes, but... I promise you, my friend, we'll get dressed first. Thank you. You are an angel, sir. Uh, and he uh, looks quizzically at you as you say that. Um, as if he he's not... It, it looks like he doesn't know how to interpret that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can see Davian uh, nods uh, to the elf and then turns back to you. Um, and he ignores Vasero, he ignores... Um, Aramil and uh, Gary and Mouse and Nelfane. He just looks at Enoch and he says, 
I don't know what it is you try to do here. My vow still stands because the baby is alive. I do not know if your friend had anything to do with it. I will assume that he didn't. But my family will be watching you. Um, and I'd ac I actually appreciate that. Please do. And um, thank you for your vote of confidence. I apologize for any um, confusion. And for my naked friend. <laughs> I'm going to look at uh, uh, Sarah. <laughs> my Baldur's great hairy toes, man. Put some clothes on. <laughs> I give him, um, like, I think I have a cloak here. Give him that. Yeah, you probably have that. Right? I hood it for a cloak. Yeah, I, I, I put his fur cloak on and slowly walk back to the to the house to get the rest of my stuff. The walk of shame. <laughs> the walk of shame. Oh my. Uh, mm. Mouse is going to follow him at a distance and watch. And so are two ravens. Uh, you can see them jump from tree to tree uh, following Vasero. Okay. All right, we need to like get out of here. I think we've overstayed our welcome just a smidge. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, you've... Uh, turn to the elf. You mentioned you were looking for a Vistani woman or girl. Yes. Did you see her? Uh, I haven't seen a girl like recently other than the infant <laughs> point over. I don't know. Um, maybe if you described her or told us her name. Her name is Arabelle. She is seven years old. Our father, Luvash, is very worried. Um, I'm afraid uh, we haven't seen her. And but, uh, we would be willing to help look for her. Uh, and he looks at all of you uh, with, with this uh, doubt on his face. And he says... I will probably be better alone, but I can lead you to the wolf's den if you want me to. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Buck is trying really hard to remember where he's heard that name before. Arabelle. Oh. Hmm. I swear I've heard it. But I didn't write it down. Mother of God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not confusing with Aramel? No. Nope. Thought I heard it before. Maybe a different game. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the elf uh, turns his horse and trots uh, slowly uh, outside of the valley. Uh, yeah, and we uh, follow I'll, him, or does he, is he leaving us? I'll, I'll turn to my bear and like, whisper down to him and say, Hey, uh, like, what, what was it you were eating? Please tell me it wasn't human. <laughs> Good. Like chicken. Goat. <laughs> if, um, uh, if this elf uh, leaves us, I would ask him. Um, I don't know if he's leaving us, but if, if if he was, then I would try to ask him uh, where we could find uh, Luvash. If we if we found a girl, to return her. Luvash is residing just outside of Valaki, near the shoreline. He wouldn't happen to be living next to a Vistani woman named Esmeralda, would he? And he says, Esmeralda, interesting. I met a group of men who said they are working for a woman named Esmeralda. I didn't like their smell. So I got out of the road and let them pass. We met them too. Interesting. Yeah, dangerous. Okay. Um, he just uh, leads uh, north outside of the valley and uh, back into the road, um, walking um, north. Uh, on the old Svalich road, um, 
basically um, returning the same way that uh, you uh, walked from Valaki uh, toward this valley. Um, and after um, something like an hour uh, worth of uh, a slow trot uh, slash ride, he points uh, into the bushes uh, and says, Here, here I heard the baby cry. Delphine? Yeah, I'll um, approach the area and look at the ground to see if I can find any tracks there. Okay. Um, from anybody else beside this rider and wolves. Um, do make your roll. Eh, that's a nine. Nine. So nine. Um, you do notice that the elf uh, barely left uh, tracks. Obviously, is very comfortable around this area. You do find the uh, wolves then. Uh, uh, pretty easily. Uh, it's um, inside a dead trunk, a dead uh, tree trunk, uh, and you can definitely smell and uh, um, feel uh, the presence of um, wolves uh, around this uh, area. Uh, I need you to make a perception roll as you look inside this uh, dead tree trunk. It, it's pretty large, actually. Well, that's better. A 20. Ooh, nice. cool. Um, so you find two interesting things. The first one is a rune carved into the inside of this dead uh, tree trunk. Um, you're not sure what uh, it means, though. Um, and the other interesting uh, thing is that... Um, you can see some... Um, belongings of the baby there um, uh, her uh, diaper if, if it was a leather uh, I don't know a, a wrap that uh, uh, she wore uh, maybe the toy that she held um, and you think that um, she wasn't uh, mistreated Uh, but I don't see any of the wolves around here now. No, you do smell them, uh, but you don't see any of, any of them. Right. Well, I'll, I'll pick up the belongings she had. Okay. And take it out of, and say, hmm, well, she didn't S look like she was mistreated. Yeah, kind of so uh, you pick up the, the toy, um, and it's a small uh, doll with one eye missing and uh, a smile that is broken and stitched, uh, which actually gives it a little bit of a creepy smile, or something like this. Uh, and you turn it, and uh, behind it there is uh, a writing, Is no Blinsky, is no fun. Oh, We've heard that before. Crap. Yeah, that's the toy maker from, uh, from uh, Valaki. The, yeah, vampire, no. the vampire killer, right? No. No. no, no, uh, no Blinsky no. was the guy that was getting beat up when we first arrived. Right, 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 right. right. The yeah. guy who... By Isaac. And a lot of yeah. the dolls in East Max room, yeah, had that yeah. also on it. Mm. Uh, yeah, he's a local doll maker. Yeah. Um, it's his branding. I mean, can't, can't argue with the guy, he's making it, selling toys. Well, the, the, I think the only place we saw that toy were in Ismark's room. To be fair, we weren't exactly looking <laughs> for toys. True, but <laughs> they, does this look like a child, like a doll you would give to your child? Yes. <laughs> oh. I'm a half orc burb. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll ask someone else. Does this look like? It's much it's nicer like... than the toys I grew up with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did also notice a rune in there, like maybe oh. Enoch or mm. Aramil or yeah. see if Gary it's could have religious. a look at it. Sure. Let's see if it's religious in nature. It's I rolled an 18. Mm. I'm going to try Arcana. Got oh. a 24, I think. I'll try yeah. history. I got a 23. 23 for uh, Arcana. Dang. Okay. Um, you uh, look at this uh, rune um, and 
when you uh, look at it, it looks like um, Hmm. Uh, okay, so it looks like maybe an eagle or a raven or a bat, you're not sure, uh, with, his, with its wings spread and a castle behind it. Um, but it's very hard to uh, make the shapes. It took you some uh, looking and, um, you know... Uh, looking for meanings inside of the carving. It's it's not very big. Uh, it took you some time to figure it out, but you think it's either a, a raven, a bat, or an eagle spread out with a castle behind it. Hmm. Hmm. The, uh, the Dusk Elf says, I will uh, leave you now for your journey to continue. I just ask him if he recognizes this rune or if it looks familiar to him. Uh, he uh, dismounts, takes a, a hard look at the rune and says, yes, this is Strad's crest. And then he uh, remounts and starts uh, trotting toward the road. Then he stops and turns around. Where are you headed, if I may ask? Kind of feel like we're halfway to Greenvost Hold, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I, Anyways, I'll, I'll, I would like to visit the Vistandi camp near the Lucky. Um, Is that at Greenvost? No, it's right outside of Lucky at the. Oh, river. the one that we were at. No, another one. What the hell? Totally lost now. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Morale? Is. <laughs> oh, I thought he shoes at. West of Valaki, isn't that Greenvost Hold? So west of Valaki is uh, Greenvost Hold, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other side, near the shoreline, the Vistani camp is located. Okay. Yeah, isn't that the way we're headed now? It depends on you. <laughs> I thought that's where we were going to go. I actually so. have no idea where we're going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, I'm, but... I, I know we probably aren't all that welcome at the Wizard of Wines, but uh, yeah. Enoch, do you have to check evil or some other spell like that? Not right now. I can tomorrow. It, it, I'm kind of afraid that maybe uh, Strahd did something to this baby, like corrupted, infected or something. Oh, well. There, if this you... is simple here. And the wolves do work for him. We have to wait. I can do it. Yeah. Happy to wait, happy to do it. But I have to pray again for my spells. I didn't choose that one. Yeah. Maybe we can at least uh, let the, the Mardikovs know what we found, that, that this is where the baby was and what, uh, and that we found the symbol over there. Yeah, because it looks like uh, Strahd tried to leave his uh, own barrel in the Mardikov castle. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we also want, uh, I think we also wanted to visit uh, a place called Kursk, perhaps. We found uh, like a key to one of the, to uh, one of the coffins over there, which. What? Found a key to a uh, coffin we've... in Kursk? Yeah. We, we found a couple of, uh, before the inn in uh, Valaka was burnt, there were a couple of, uh, uh, visitors, I think, from Kursk, right, Ido? That's a, that's the name of the place. Yes, Kursk. Yeah, and it's C R E Z K. Kursk. And after we uh, and after it burned, we went back to look for anything that that remained, and we found a key to uh, I don't know if it's a, cri a crypt a crypt key. Um, a long time ago, we learned of a castle west of Valaki, which was home to a knightly order. The Order of the Silver Dragon, it was destroyed. Is that Greenvost Hold? Yes. I want to go to Greenvost Hold. Yeah, and Blue Wash is near there, so we can talk to him in case we find that lady. Okay. Where is this uh, crest, by the way? You know? I don't see it on the map. Uh, it's far to the south. Oh, okay. Dude, my notes no, are I useless. See it, I see it, I see it. <laughs> yeah, mine too. 
There's just a list of random things. Yeah. So is mine, but I'm trying to piece them together now. And so if we go towards Green Vost Hold, do we we can do the, uh, uh, the we can visit the camp and go to Green Vost Hold, is that correct? Uh, the Vistani camp? Green Vost Hold comes first and then you need to pass um, Valaki and then the uh, Vistani camp. It's it's all okay. very close. It's on the shore of a lake, so you've got Green Vost Holt, Valaki, and then the camp. Okay. Oh, so the camp is okay. on the other side of Valaki. Okay. Yep. I thought it was on this side. Cool. Yeah. Well, would, now do we have a very interested in visiting the camp first. Do we have a picture of the map, so we don't have to roll. Uh, I think I've sent 20. it. Yeah, I think I've sent yeah. it. Uh, not sure if you're in roll twenty, maybe in the blog. Uh, it's it in the blog, but also on World 20. Yeah. In the blog, he yeah. uploaded it on session 3. Probably, okay. yes. Yeah, you're dead. I'm looking at it right now. So the elf uh, uh, looks at you and says, uh, Good luck on your journeys. And don't walk in the woods at night. Take care. Thank you. Good luck to you with uh, finding uh, Arabelle. Yeah. And he, he nods. Okay. Um, it's uh, um, uh, approaching uh, noon. Um, no rain, fortunately, uh, but it's very cold. And uh, again, the black sky uh, above you are covered uh, from horizon to horizon with dark clouds. What do you want to do? the hold, right? Well, as I said, Nelfane would like to visit the Vistani camp and see Ismerelda. We're traveling east to Valaki? Toward Valaki, yes. Yeah, so we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the hold first and then go probably I don't know, enter through or go around Valaki and then go to the camp. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um so you start um, your uh, uh, journey uh, east with uh, um, your thoughts full of what happens up till now um, and toward the, the evening as you approach um, the area in which you know that uh, the, the uh, fort, this, this ruined fort will be visible uh, soon you hope. Um, Nelfane, um, you smell something familiar, um, and I need you to make a perception roll. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. You can alert your uh, party members. Uh, there are people around you in the forest. Uh, very close to you, and your bear also emits this. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll just like whoever's walking next to me, like whisper, like there's people around us, and then I'll uh, take a few steps back or uh, just slow down and whisper to the next in line, like hey, hey, there's a few people near us, around us, like just casually whispering to each of the members <laughs> of the party, so I don't alert anybody, like. Egg normal. Um. So with Nelfane's uh, alert, you are not surprised uh, when uh, three rough-looking men, uh, which you have all met before, emerge from the bushes. Uh, they all uh, uh, hold these um, wicked-looking clubs. Uh, they are dressed in leathers, um, and they are... Um, they have deep voices, and their leader uh, looks at uh, Nelfane and says, We have a message for you. A message from our employer. And then they raise their clubs and lunge at you. Uh, I need there's, to there's really no need for this. <laughs> I say it immediately. Uh, I scream at them, Wait, what is the message? <laughs> here is the, here <laughs> what is the message? Here is the message, uh, and then they try to club uh, Nelfin. Uh, I need you to all uh, roll your initiative. Oh, I crit. 
Again, 22. I almost yeah. quit. I rolled a natural 19. Okay, Vasero with a 19. Uh, Gary no, with a 21. It oh. was a natural 19. 21. 21. And Gary with 22? Yeah. Okay. Okay. RML with 15. With 14? Yeah. Okay. Melfane and the bear with 24. Oh my god. That's a crit <laughs> again. Most yeah. got a 9. Enoch got a 13. Amazing. Uh, Nelfane, what do you do? Three men uh, rushing you. Yeah, um, but now I'll just uh, like dodge and say, so if they have disadvantage on the second. You see, like, this is really not necessary. I'm on my way to see her now. You you don't have to do this. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Should they have a disadvantage. Out, why? Uh, because I'm taking the dodge action. Oh, okay. Great. Awesome. Um, yes. So let's see. Uh, disadvantage. So one of them tries to hit you with the club and misses. Uh, there is another miss and yet another miss. Uh, the last miss was, was a, a fumble, so he slips uh, on the mud and lands uh, sp splashing mud all around and cursing. Uh, the leader barks, uh, get up and crack his skull. Um, Gary. I'm going to, if I can, try to use hypnotic pattern on them. Now it's a 30 foot cube around any, it's a 40, uh, 30 foot cube I can place anywhere, but I want to make it so it doesn't get an Elfian if it's possible. Okay. Yes, you can. All right. Uh, so yeah, 30 foot cube and um, it makes this weird pattern that appears and vanishes and each creature inside it who sees the pattern must make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Um, wisdom saving throw one. What's the DC? The DC, my spell DC is um, 14. Okay, so we have one failure, one success, and one success. So what happens to the guy that failed? He becomes charmed. Uh, while charmed by the spell, the creature is incapacitated and speed of zero. So basically, he just like stands there and drools. I'm guessing. Okay. Yes. Uh, exactly what he does. Awesome. Anything oh, else? And if he takes any damage, if he takes any damage, then he he'll come back. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Um, no. I'm, I'm basically just ready. Okay. I'm ready to play. Acero. Okay. Um. So there are multiple um ones of them. So yeah, multiple people. Yeah, three uh, guys basically trying to club uh, nail fane. One of them uh, stops and uh, stares at some bright light uh, and drooling. Okay. Uh. Um, I, I attack the, the one that's closest to nail fane then okay. with my rapier. Okay. And um, it's uh, 14 plus 7 makes 21. Yes, hit. And. Um, I, I draw upon the, the my newfound powers from the dagger and um, the the target that I hit uh, it erupts in flames and um, yeah some some green flames shoot out and hit a few of the um, other guys that are standing around. Okay. Wow. And um, I think there's an audible whoa from Gary. <laughs> I don't have yes, that. the forest uh, uh, light up with green flame. <laughs> so that's eleven for the main target yes. and three for the um, next targets that are there. I think. Okay, so. Uh, and, um, but would that hit me also if I'm next to him? Yes. Um, does it? Wait, let me, um, as a part of the action, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. think the target suffers. Um, oh, um, only one of them takes uh, okay. the AOE so, damage. And so the replay um, yeah. is from a target I can uh, to a target I can choose. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm um, assuming you don't hit the drooling one uh, to avoid uh, waking him up. Waking him, mm -hmm. him up. Okay. Yep. Yep, Great. Right. So and, both uh, of them. Also seven, uh, seven sneak attack to the main target. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so they both uh, shake uh, with the flames and uh, scream as their leathers uh, start to burn. Uh, Ramil. Um, hmm. So can I get the, only the two of them who aren't? Oh, I, I'm. What I have is a fireball, and I want to. And I want to uh, leave the guy who is currently hypnotized. So you can uh, sidestep and go a bit off road, and then from that angle you can strike them. Um. Okay. Okay. Great. So you yeah, move I did that. and whisper the words of uh, a spell. Yeah, that's a, that's a fireball, so it's 8d6. Uh, you need, they uh, need to the, make a saving throw? Yeah, the saving is 15, dexterity. Dexterity, so 1, 2. Okay. That's 15. So it's 15, so I had uh, one failure and one success. Okay. And, uh, so I got uh, 26 for the guy who failed and uh, 13 for the guy who saved. Okay. Uh, did you, what did you just cast? I fireball. Holy. Okay, so the forest explodes Jeez. around you. <laughs> um, oh, damn, right. It's a forest. Right. And, <laughs> and flames start to lick the, the trees. Uh, and the bushes and everything, both uh, of the, the men, they just fly back uh, as the um, uh, shockwave uh, runs through the forest. Uh, they land on all fours, uh, uh, crying with pain. Um, Enoch. Really starting to second guess my choice of traveling companion. <laughs> <laughs> Overkill much? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's playing with cursed blades and running around naked, fireball and everything. <laughs> Jesus, I'm just gonna hit one with my hammer. Okay. The fire makes light, right? Fire does make light. I have fire spells. I'm not judging. Just nervous. Twenty one to hit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then again, I killed a woman with my hammer, so who am I? Uh nine damage. <laughs> And damage. So um, you break its jaw, uh, and it goes like you know uh, to the uh, one side, uh, and you can see his bloodshot eyes. They look up at you, and then the jaw snaps back into place. Uh, you all can hear bone crunching uh, coming from their bodies as they are on all fours. Their body is uh, covered with uh, black fur. Their jaw uh, extends and uh, fangs grow out. Their eyes turn red, uh, deep red. Uh, you have seen this color before. And two huge wolves um, howl into the burning forest and night. I'm gonna take. I, I go. I take it all back. Fireball! 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna. Can I drop my warhammer and, as a bonus action, draw El Kalar? Yes, you can. Shring. And we find out what it does. Yes. Um. Uh, the hypnotic pattern. Do I get a save? Uh, in my turn. Oh, let me see. Um. At the uh, end of my turn. Uh no. Uh -huh. Um. Takes any damage, or if someone else uses an action to shake the creature out of its stupor, doesn't say anything about making more saves. Okay, so one of them jumps at uh, Enoch. Uh, you know what? Uh, two of them, uh, both of them will jump. No, one of them will jump at Enoch. The other will jump at uh, Nelfane. Uh, they howl into the night and lunge. Um, so for Enoch, I have. Uh, Oh, actually, they two they make uh, two attacks uh, with their claws and with their bite. Um, so with the claws, I have a fifteen against your armor. Um, you know, armor class is fifteen. Oh, okay, so that's a hit. Um, and you take um, four plus four plus two, so ten points of damage from uh, its claws. Then he tries to bite you. Uh, and I've got a, a 16 this time. Hit. Hit. Um, 
on this. Uh, he bites you for six more uh, points of damage. Uh, you can feel it, its uh, fangs deep into your uh, bite deep into your flesh and hits a saliva crawling on the wound. I need you to make um, a constitution saving throw. Uh, Nelfane. Uh, claws coming at... Uh, it's, it's still at disadvantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Uh, let's see. Okay, the claws miss you. Uh, the bite also. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, the other one stays uh, stays uh, drooling. Uh, he he doesn't like move. My con save was... A uh, whopping five. A whopping five. Okay. Um, cool. Um, I'm not aware. We'll mouse. Find a... Uh, well, this changes things now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mouse is going to uh, attack with spear and fist. Okay. And spend a. I think he can just spend a key point and try stunning strike on one of them. Great. Uh, now, fan, prepare your attack. You're next. Yeah. So the spear is a 21, and the ooh, fist is a 25 to hit. Okay. Um. So the spear goes in. Uh. uh sorry, and the fist. Four damage if he takes it. Yes. So the spear goes in, uh, the fist goes in, uh, they both uh, take the punches, um, but in their uh, uh, um, shifted form, you can see that some of this damage, as a mouse pulls out the spear, the, the wound closes, unless it's a silvered uh, spear. Nope. Okay. So, five damage from the punch, but now uh, has to make a save or it's stunned until... The end of my next turn. That's a wisdom save or constitution. constitution? Save, I believe. Okay, and I have a whopping three. Oh yes, it's stunned. Excellent. Okay, cool. So we have uh, one stunned. Okay. Anything else for mouse? Um, no. That's if it's stunned. He'll he'll back away. Okay, I need you all to make uh, dexterity saves to jump around flames, uh, falling branches, and um, uh, other uh, burning debris. The the three werewolves do the same. What's uh, uh, DC? I'm not uh, telling you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling so poorly right now. Okay. I got. Uh, Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen for me also. Uh, Thirty-seven. Awesome. So. I I got an eight and I used the luck to. Adjust that. Yeah. Okay. Also a dexterity eight. save you said. Ooh. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's a nineteen for mouse and a four for me. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyone with the fourteen or higher takes four points of damage. Uh, the rest take eight points of burning. Oh, uh, agonizing cool. damage. Oh, is it burning? Uh, yes, it's burning. Yeah. So I take half? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it falls and you just, you know... <laughs> yeah. Nelfane. Both, both me and my bear failed. Okay. We are, we are not dodging very well right now. Um, but I have my swords out now and one of them is silvered. Okay. So my silvered sword is an 18 to hit. Uh, it hits, oh, yeah. and as you yeah. hit it with the uh, the silvered uh, sword, uh, one of the wolf howls in pain. Uh, it doesn't like that feeling. No, that's good, but it was minimum damage, so only five. Five, okay. If we're, yeah. if we're attacking uh, the stunned one, we have advantage. Yeah, so this yes. is not the stunned one, this is the one next to me. Okay. Uh, if it had been with advantage, that, that would have been a crit. But right. <laughs> oh, I didn't, roll, I didn't roll for the uh, stunned one to see... Oh. Uh, hmm. okay, no, he didn't take any fire damage, so lucky you. Uh, and with my offhand attack, that's a 16. Yes, hit. Uh, two damage, but this is not silver. Okay. Uh, and then my bear gets to attack two times, and the first time is an 8, so I'm guessing that doesn't hit. Right. And a 12. A 12 hits. That... Oh, good. It's for 9 slashing damage. 
bashing. Okay, uh, he takes That's half it. of that. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually not sure if it counts as a magical weapon or not. I don't think it does. No, it's not a magical uh, weapon. Okay. Um, Gary. Um, I'm going to hit the um, the one that stunned. I got hit by um, by um, our monk. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna think I'm gonna put hex on him. On the stunned can... one? Yeah, not, okay. not the hypnotized one. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my bonus action to put hex on him, yes. and I'll choose his what, like strength ability, dex ability. Con, I can keep stunning him. Con, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll reduce his con, make him easier to stun, and then I'll use Eldritch Blast on him. Okay. Oh. I rolled a twenty-four. It's oh, twelve damage plus the necrotic from the hex. Okay, he drops. Oh yes. Oh. Nice. Oh. Didn't even need the hex. Um, and that's that's my move. That's my time right there. Awesome. Uh, Vasero. Remember, remember, next turn you can move the hex as a bonus action. So oh, excellent. So, um, is there just one left, or are there two still? There is one uh, that is uh, still drooling, and one that is wounded but still on its uh, four legs, in front of uh, Nelfane and uh, Enoch. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. Um i um, slashing at the wounded one with um, a rapier and uh, my dagger in my offhand. Okay. And that's a 19 and an 8, so uh, I guess the offhand doesn't hit. Yes. And... Um, 8, 15, 19, um, 23 against the wounded one. Yes. And... I actually... Do the same that I did last time, and a bunch of flames shoots to the druid one for four damage. Okay. Uh, for the drooling one, you uh, he if he take damage, he might wake up from his. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay, so he snaps out of the. And then he. Uh... Okay, no, not now. But... <laughs> okay, great. Um, that was uh, Vasero. We are back at RML. Okay, so we have two of them. Both of them are badly wounded, lightly wounded. I needed oh. to make a perception roll. I'm not very perceptive. Got seven. Okay, so yes. One oh, down, oh. one wounded, one uh, wiping drool and turning into a, a wolf. All right, so the one that just turned uh, into a wolf, I'm going to levitate him. Okay. Uh, he needs to do a con uh, constitution. No, actually, he doesn't need to, to do a constitution save. I'm going to give him a six oh. for, for okay. a constitution. Okay. Uh, so he he starts levitating at uh, 20 feet. Awesome. And he howls uh, and uh, rages and rakes and uh, spits as he does that. Okay. So the wounded one or the drooling one? The drooling one. Okay. Levitated. Awesome. Um, as you finish the words of a spell, uh, it's Anok's turn. Uh, I'm going to rage and attack the wounded one with El Kalar. Okay. Uh, okay. So, unless there's any extra bonuses, I'm un unaware of my attack roll is 16. 16 hits. As you pierce its flesh, uh, it shrieks and gives this high-pitched uh, scream that rattles uh, all the bushes around and even the trees seem to be uh, trying to uh, avoid this uh, uh, horrid scream. Um, it burns! You can hear um, as a silvery flame bursts out of the wound. Uh, wow. Yes. Eight damage, unless there's anything else he drops. That I'm unaware of. I I impressive, I say. Nice. Mm -hmm. Drops. Um, but before you manage to take a, a breath of uh, of air, Aramil, you feel two clawed hands grab you by the um, shoulders and 
pull you into the wood. Uh, you sidestep uh, into the, the forest to cast your fireball. Um, and uh, this uh, werewolf that was lurking in the shadows jumps at you. Um, oh, I scream. Oh my god. Dun dun dun. Yeah, 20? Oh. Damn. Yeah. And he was never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see him disappear into the forest. <laughs> now um, we hear screaming. Like alien. <laughs> yes. um, so, uh, so that, that was the, the clause, actually. Um, so it's double damage, right? Mm -hmm. We have 8, oh, 12, uh, 14 plus 4, that's 18 points of damage from the claws as uh, it rakes you. Um, okay. And the bite. Uh, wow, that was close. That was a 19, uh, unmodified. Um, and um, yep. Mm. So I got a... S no, no chance. Okay. Wait, wait. Oh, actually, maybe I do. Just a minute. Uh, uh, uh. I already am at 15, so it's a plus five. Yes, okay, I cast, uh, I do a shield on on the, on this attack. Okay, so well, he said he said 19 unmodified. Unmodified, yes. Oh, it's unmodified. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind then. Okay, uh, so this is an additional uh, six points of damage, uh, and I'm I need exactly you. At zero now. Okay, so you drop, uh, but uh, that uh, uh, doesn't matter. You feel the saliva of this creature on your skin. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, the rest of you, the wizard has disappeared, and you have one uh, howling wolf uh, spinning in the air. Oh, the, does the levitate drops at this point? Yeah. Awesome. He uh, lands like a wolverine. <laughs> On the floor, and then he runs toward uh, uh, Nelfane, of course. Still oh, with a disadvantage? No. Oh, okay. So that's uh, a great five. Uh, he. Oh, but that was with his claws. So th 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 uh, the claws uh, dance on your armor and uh, don't damage you. Uh, that is a. That's a 16 against your uh, armor class. Yeah, that hits. That hits. Okay. Um, so these are um, 10 points of damage and the saliva that burns you. Yeah, uh, 18. On the saving throw. Okay. Yeah. So I should be good. Hopefully. Hopefully. Only, yeah. only two of us are going to turn into werewolves. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll be great. <laughs> I've always uh, wanted to have a werewolf wizard with us. What will, what was your uh, uh, save against the bite, uh, Aramil? Ten. Okay. Ten. Okay. And then wolf wizard the sounds awesome. Itself. <laughs> wolf wizard. <laughs> okay. 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 Guys, uh, what do you do? Aramil is down. Uh, we are at Mouse's turn. Uh, the wizard is gone into the forest, screaming and kicking, uh, and. Uh, and the levitated uh, werewolf is uh, no longer levitated. What do you do? I'm going to be um, back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Famous last words. Did Mouse did see where the wizard went? Um, see if he pulled, Aramil get pulled roll, in? Roll a perception uh, for him. 15. Yes, he did. Uh, he spotted another werewolf in the forest. Okay, so he's going to run in there. Uh, does... Is he gonna? Is there gonna be an opportunity attack on him for doing that? No. No. Okay. So he's gonna ru back. run in there. He's gonna drop his uh, drop his spear. It didn't seem to do much, anyways. And run in and attack the wolf if he can. Okay. Try. So he he finds it uh, um, uh, looming over the sprawled uh, body of the wizard. Okay. Uh, so stunning strike. Uh, so two attacks, I guess. Ugh. Uh, he rolled a one on his first attack roll. <laughs> so that's a seven. Okay. Hits the mud. And then a 19 on his second one. Yeah. 
that okay. that connects. Do I even need to roll damage? Um, I think uh, monk's Specific hand uh, are considered magical. Uh, I don't. It, I didn't see that anywhere in okay. the player's handbook. Uh, yeah, you uh, can you can roll, but uh, uh, are they considered I'll, I'll magical? Yeah, I thought they were it. just considered weapons. No, but it said can't remember the level. Uh, mm. he might not. It can. Yeah, okay, so roll yet. your damage. Four damage. Four, four damage. damage okay. But uh, he has to make a constitution save. Oh, DC right. thirteen. Uh, yeah, he made it. Uh... Okay. He and Mouse will stand kind of over top of Aramil. Okay. Um, so we're back at Nelfin. Uh, yeah. Let's... Um, it's 6th level. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. So, uh, Nelfin, as you uh, uh, brace yourself um, for okay. uh, the, the coming attack, um, you see something. The clouds uh, part, uh, and you can see starless sky uh, above you and you think you see this huge winged creature uh, fluttering above uh, the clouds at this point uh, the two remaining wolves lift their head howl and flee into the forest <laughs> do i get a uh, opportunity attack yes i'm taking it I'm berserk. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do the same, and I'll my player will also do the same. Okay, uh, that's it. And, and as I stab it in the back, I'll say it, it didn't have to go down like this. Uh, Eighteen. <sighs> yes. To hit. Yes, hits. With El Kalar. Ooh, eleven damage. Oh. Plus um, whatever. you pluck out an eye this time. Nice. Um, nice. It pops out, burst of silvery flame. Uh, the wolf uh, reforms into this hybrid wolf-man thing, as it limps into the forest, uh, howling uh, in pain. Yeah. While it's limping away, I believe <laughs> a twelve hit. Yes. Or is it an advantage since it's from behind? Uh, no, he's very I don't aware. Think that actually works. Yeah, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, but a twelve hits, so that's six damage when my silver is long short. Okay. Uh, he howls and again. Eleven, eleven from my bear. Eleven. Uh, eleven doesn't hit when he's in his hybrid form. Oh, damn it! Okay. Great. So uh, the the f the natural moisture of the air uh, the the uh, brought the flames down, but a thick smoke covering all of you, uh, along with a thick layer of mist that now crawls on the ground. Um, Ramil, I need you to make a death saving throw. Remind me how it goes. So Just, one D10, uh, right? D20. D20. You need a ten. D20? Yeah, no modifiers. You need ten or more. Okay, that was a fumble. Okay, uh, it's a oh, one. We have two two fails. Yeah. So you have two failures. Don't fail okay. a third time. All right. So, uh, can I go look for him in the woods? Yeah, most <laughs> will shout out, and I'll I can run over and cast a cure wounds on him. Okay, that was. At least give him some close. HP but, back. You need Ooh, to find snap. me though. Yeah, mouse yeah, mouse, mouse was with you. He found oh, okay. he found you. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. ten. I rolled max ten hit points back. Awesome. Thanks. What did the wing creature look like? Could I tell what it was? Uh, roll your perception. Okay. 23. It was a giant bat. Mm. Okay. Wolf's good, bat. No, wait. Wolf's bad, bat's good. No. Raven's good. No. <laughs> Giant no. bats I think wolf's bad. bad, bats more bad. No, this is this is Gary thinking vampire. positively. <laughs> Wait, so bad. Bats are our friends. <laughs> um, so how are your hit points, Aramil, with that ten back? Um, twenty-two short. Okay. 
Okay. We've still got some traveling to do, so I'll hit you up with a second level cure wounds as well. Okay. Uh, another nine. All right. Cool. The clouds so, uh, part again. Thanks. Um, and just before you, you can see a small hill. Uh, actually, it's not that small. Um, upon which looms uh, a huge ruined mount mansion. Its turret capped with fairy tale cones. Its towers uh, lined with sculpted battlements. A third of the structure had collapsed, uh, as has part of the roof, but the rest appears intact. A dark octagonal uh, tower rises above the surrounding architecture, rising up, 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 up until it disappears uh, inside uh, inside the the low uh, um, layer of mist. Um, then out of the fog comes a distant uh, a peal of thunder, quickly accompanied by the howling of wolves in the woods around you. Uh, but the house uh, stands silent, seeming like the fossil remain of some long dead thing smote upon uh, the mountainside. You behold a green Vostholt. We don't see any people. That's where the order of the Silver Dragon was. All right. Movement. You can roll perception. Uh, three. You see eight. nothing. The wizard sees <laughs> nothing. I <laughs> try the owl. <laughs> no, no ah. faint tries looking out also, but yeah, he's still distraught about these werewolves coming after him, so he's too distracted. Okay. It was a seven. You know what? Um, I think a history roll sounds like a good idea here. <laughs> yeah, let's use history to see what we know. Thirteen. Okay. We got a 15 for the owl. Okay, the perceptive owl, unless uh, Vasero or Enoch wants to roll. No. Uh, I got an 8. Okay. So uh, you're basically catching your breath as the owl uh, circles around. Uh, the owl spots two things. He spots um, a statue uh, covered with moth and grass and fungi of a dragon, a stone dragon. Uh, with its um, wings folded, and the dragon is looking at the entrance of this mansion. Uh, next to the statue uh, parks a Vistani wagon. Excellent. And a That's horse uh, is uh, attached to the wagon. Does it look like the wagon of the four, guy, four men that we saw before? No, uh, this is a Vistani uh, wagon. It looks... A little like um, uh, Van Richten's uh, yeah. carnival wagon. Uh, there are similarities, but uh, no writings or something like that. Okay. Um, I'm just. Ooh. I'm going in. <laughs> All on. I'm, I'm going to walk in. Mouse is going to hang back a little bit and and hide and and watch. Um, before we go in, I'm casting good berry and eating a lot of berries. <laughs> to cure myself. Um, Actually, I'll most... it twice. Um, to cure myself and my bear a bit. Vicero, what are you doing? I think I'm just going in as well. Okay, so Mouse is just yeah, going to cast too. Pass Without Trace on himself. It okay. Gives him a plus 10 to his stealth. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. So he gets a 35. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who's mouse? Who's mouse? We had he a, disappears like a yeah. fart in the wind. We had a sex, a, a sixth party member. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Don't remember. Okay. Um, wow. As you approach uh, this mansion, um, you uh, notice this um, ten foot wide, ten foot high cube of granite, uh, and on top of it there is a moss covered statue of a dragon. Uh, you can see its wings uh, tucked close, uh, close uh, to its body, and it looks east toward the mansion. So if this is the door of the ruined mansion, the dragon is basically sitting on the, um, a granite box looking at it. Uh, you can see steps leading to two uh, iron-studded double doors. Um, 
and from the road where you approach the mansion you can see that third of the structure has collapsed uh, but the rest does th seem intact um let's uh, take a look at the wagon first you yeah. someone is there um, yeah, i'll uh, i'll cast light on my hammer and and, and i'll shout out Psh. oh there strangers is anyone here uh you can only hear a <laughs> of the Horse. The horse. Um, but um, Nelfane, I need you to make a perception roll. Thirteen. You see a handkerchief tied um, to one of the wagon's poles. So it's a simple wagon, a barrel, um, um, like wagon with a, a bench. Uh, just uh, behind the horse and there are two poles one for the parking uh, stick um, and on top of one of these poles uh, they hold uh, lamps oil lamps uh, on one of the uh, poles there is a handkerchief tied it looks familiar fantastic um, I'll just go over to Enoch and say um, we might, or I might meet someone in here that I know, and I'm not quite sure how I'll react. What do you want me to do? Uh, I'm kind of afraid that I'm in hell right now and about to see my wife. Uh, who died. Who died? Yes. So you're suggesting she's undead? I'm suggesting we are both dead and in hell you what yeah you're undead no <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> it's rather confusing we, let's talk about this later what do you want me to do about your wife <laughs> i could take two approaches to this here yeah there's um, there's priest enoch and there's barbarian enoch yeah i need <laughs> i need the priest enoch for some guidance here okay um I I'll believe keep my temper in check. Yeah, I, I believe she was the one that sent the werewolves. Okay. But please don't hurt her, whatever she does. Very well. Um, did you want me to go investigate the wagon? Uh, no, I'll do it. But okay, I'm gonna stay back. Yeah. Keep the light. I'll uh, I'll put my hammer away. Move the light to my shield. Okay. Yeah, but. Don't let the others kill her, please. If okay. it's the one. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll approach good. the wagon. Okay, I'll uh, kind of stand between him and the wagon and just gonna like turn around and face the party and kind of like, oh, look at those battlements. <laughs> oh, look at that door. There's interesting <laughs> statues. Okay. There's a lot of static noise now, right? Yeah. No, no, that, that's me uh, uh, with my pages. Oh, okay, okay. Right? It's gone now, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you... Who is examining the wagon? Or are I you? Am. You are. Okay. Um, I'm keeping a sideways eye on Vicero. You you, you would probably see anything. me, you'd see me doing that a lot now. Like he's yeah. so, very distrustful of you. Um, um, Nelfen, you know that when you and your wife were together and farming and living your happy life, um, she, you two, planned to have a baby, um, and she asked you to prepare this uh, wagon with comfortable uh, pillows and places to put all your stuff. And she also asked you to install a trap on the door uh, to avoid anyone. You know, you could place the baby there and he'll be safe um, while the two of you are out near the fire. Um, you remember that request uh, as you reach out to open the back door of the wagon yeah. kind of stops you as you do it and then mm. yeah with a trembling hand i'll open okay um 
you hold uh, the, the door and open uh, it very, very slowly, and you indeed see a tripwire uh, connected to the door. Um, because you were very careful, you didn't uh, um, disconnect this wire, uh, but you now see it. Uh, you can see the inside of the wagon, um, and you can see that a flask of alchemist fire is hanging from the roof of this wagon and kind of uh, uh, waves above uh, above the the ground. And on the um, there are a lot of shelves with boxes and uh, uh, casks and all kinds of items folded and uh, neatly arranged. Um, but you know that if you push the pull the door open, uh, the wire will disconnect and the alchemy fire cask will fall and explode. What do you do? Um, is it possible to get inside the wagon without opening the door? Is there like you, some other opening? You'll need to disarm this uh, somehow. Um, you can uh, make a ooh. Uh, sleight of hand or stealth or what do you do to disarm? I don't know actually. No, sleight of hand. Slide of hand. hand. You can sleight of hand. hand. Do a sleight of hand. Use your thief. Yeah. Um, yeah. Use your wizard. You hand. can do it with advantage because you know the trap. You installed it yourself. Okay. Not with a, a burning. Uh, n not with an alchemist fire, obviously, but just the design. Blast it. The design is similar. Uh, oh yeah, I'll, we, I'll let's just burn it, the wagon down. That's what we <laughs> do, no, isn't it? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try and disarm it. Okay, roll. Oh, a nineteen. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Um, you manage to disarm uh, the the this uh, wire, and you uh, get this vial of alchemist fire. Um, you get um, you quick look inside of the wagon and you can see a lot of uh, trunks and, and things there. You can see a wooden trunk covered with claw marks um, and uh, it's locked but uh, there's no um, visible key. Um, you can see a wardrobe um, containing dresses uh, that are very familiar to you. Um, mm. These were the clothes of your wife's uh, along with a traveler's robe uh, several pairs of shoes um, and um, a set of fine dresses. Um, you can see equipment, interesting equipment, um, climber's kit, a disguise kit, a healer's kit. You can see uh, a sculpted wooden cage inside and uh, two battle axes on, the, on one of the shelves. A lot of interesting uh, equipment. A crossbow and ten silvered bolts. Well, I guess like uh, looking through all the dresses, like and then smelling them to see if they actually smell like her. Oh yeah, I needed to make mm. a wisdom saving throw, as the smell almost brings you to your knees. 17. Okay. Um, you are uh, gripped with this uh, violent shudder as you uh, suddenly remember your wife and your time with her. Uh, madness almost uh, uh, grabs you, but you grind your teeth and you manage to uh, stay away of that dark hole. Um, I have up to a perception check to see if there are any other things hidden in here I can see. Uh, 10. Um, I, I still have tears in my eyes, so it's a yeah. bit hard to look. Um... you find um, a charred page from a journal. Uh, it was lying uh, below one of the shelves. Uh, you didn't see it on first glance, but uh, now you see it. Okay, I'll pick it up and see if I can read it. Uh, 
yes you can actually um it's a part of a journal uh but the handwriting uh you don't recognize it do you want to read it uh, for yourself or do you read it uh i'll read it for myself first at least um Okay. Um Okay. So, um it reads as follows. For more than three decades now, I have undertaken to investigate and expose creatures of darkness to this purifying light of truth and knowledge. Hero I am named in some circles, sage and master hunter I am called in others. That I have survived countless supernatural assaults is seen as a marvel among my peers. My name is spoken with fear and loathing among my foes. In truth, this virtuous calling began as an obsessive effort to destroy a vampire that murdered my child, and it has become for me a tedious and bleak career. Even as my life of hunting masters began, I felt the weight of time on my weary shoulders. Today I am a man who has simply lived too long. Like a regretful leech, I find myself inexcusably bound to an existence I sought out of madness and seemingly must now endure for all eternity. Of course I shall die, but whether I shall ever rest in my grave haunts my idle thoughts and torments me in my dreams. Um, it goes on. Uh, I expect that those who think me a hero will change their minds when they know the whole truth about my life as a hunter of the supernatural. Nevertheless, I must reveal here and now that I have, I have been the indirect yet certain cause of many deaths and the loss of many good friends. Mistake me not, I am not merely... I do not merely feel sorry for myself. Rather, I come to grips with a devastating realization. I now see that I am the object of a baleful Vistani curse. More tragically, the nature of this hex is such that I have not borne the brunt of it. Instead, far worse, those who surround me have fallen victims to it. Um, the tale uh, goes on. Um, and describes uh, the past of this uh, man who wrote this letter. Um, I have related the tragic story of how my only child Erasmus was taken by Vistani and sold to a vampire. I explained how Erasmus has made a minion of the Night Stalker and uh, how it was my miserable part to free him from that fate at the point of a stick. What I have neglected to illuminate before is how I tracked Erasmus' kidnappers across the land, or how I extracted Erasmus' whereabouts from them. In fact, the Vistani took Erasmus with my own unwitting permission. They had brought an extremely ill member of their tribe to me one evening and insisted that I treat him but I was unable to save the young man's life. In fear of their retribution, I begged the Vistani to take anything of mine, if only they would withhold their terrifying powers, of which I knew nothing. To my lasting astonishment, they chose to uh, take my son in exchange for their loss. By the time I realized what had occurred, they were already gone. Uh, enraged we, uh, beyond reason, I strapped the body of the dead young man to my horse and uh, followed the Vistani caravan through the woods, naively allowing the sun to set before me without seeking shelter from the night. Shortly after darkness fell, I was beset by undead that would have slain me. 
and had not their master, a leech, intervened and spared my life, for reason I do not completely understand. He somehow detected me and, with his powerful magic, took control of a pack of zombies that wandered in the forest. He spoke to me through the mouth of the dead things and placed a magic ward against undead on me, then animated the dead Vistana and bade it tell me where I would find its people. Unfortunately, I say in hindsight, the plan worked. I found the child stealers and my unwelcome outrage included a growing horde of undead <clears throat> that could not touch me thanks to the leech ward. When I found the caravan, I threatened to set the zombies on the Vistani unless they returned my dear boy. They replied that they had been so that he had been sold to the vampire, Baron Metas. Something inside me snapped. I released the zombies, and the entire tribe was eaten alive. Yet the story had not ended. Before she died, the leader cursed me, saying, Leave you always among monsters and see everyone you love die beneath their claws. Even now, so many years later, I can hear her words with painful clarity. A short time later, I found my dear Erasmus made into a vampire. He begged me to end his curse, which I did with a heavy heart. The darkness had turned him from my loving arms forever, and I foolishly believed that the curse had excited its deadly toll. I wept until on until an unsatiable uh, desire for vengeance filled the bottomless rift in my heart. And it signed Rudolf van Richten. What do you want to do? I'll go out of the wagon and just uh, motion for the rest that they can come. Um, and then I'll start looking around and say, uh, Esmeralda, uh, Esmeralda, are you here? Um, so I'm going to yep. poke my head in that wagon, see all the weapons and stuff like that. Um, what, what is Esmeralda doing with werewolves as lackeys? And why are they attacking us? I'm I taking the, me, uh, I know. the Skies kit, by the way. I'm talking to you now, <laughs> Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I have no idea. Um, I found this inside, and I'll show the letter or the journal page. Um, Van it's Van Richter's, part of Van Richter's journal. I don't, don't know. It, the dresses are hers. I it, don't know about the rest. And if, if you I can didn't see like she tears had, coming down. If I didn't know she had werewolf allies, I'd I feel like she was taking in Van Richten's uh, path. Silvered arrows, axes, crossbows. Um, but she's allied herself with werewolves. Which yeah. will probably be coming back here, I'm guessing. Speaking of it. Eh, yeah. Probably, yeah. We might want to prepare for that. Yeah, but I need to see her. So, back to my original question. Though. Are you dead? You said something about it earlier. I'm kind of afraid that this is hell. We were somewhere else. Now we're in a oh. different world, and this is hell. Oh. You never see the sun. Monsters all around to torment us. I don't know what you did to deserve this, but... Well, my my lord is still with me, so I, I, I cannot believe this is hell if he's still granting me powers. If I'm still in his good graces, give him a little holy sign in the air. Yeah, but how else would you explain it? There are many worlds. That's conversation for another time, though. Um, did you seriously just take the disguise kit? <laughs> yep. We're having a conversation. He's looting. <laughs> I want the silver bolts. 
That's awesome. Yeah, man. I know. I know how to how to use the disguise kit, and I've been looking all around to to get belongs my hands on to, one. Belongs to his wife, man. <laughs> but yeah, I, I didn't. Know, I, I'm not noticing what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Do I see him doing that? If you choose to. Yeah. Hey. I mean, there's, there, the there's so much here. Put it back. It's not <laughs> yours. If, if the owner of this wagon comes back, I'll, is, I'll gladly give it back. But is this otherwise, the I speaking? think we, we could use this. Is no, this, this, is, is, uh, this is this is my common sense speaking. I think we could we could use this. We, my common sense says don't feel steal from your friend's wife. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not stealing. He, it, it's probably. What? No, no one's coming back to this wagon. I think. You don't know that. Yeah. There's no evidence yeah. that she's dead. <laughs> While they are discussing that, I, I'm, I'm just shaking my head, and then I go over to the horse, and like pat it soothingly and whisper soothing ears to it, and then talks to it, and ask it um, how long since um, the owner has been here. Uh, he rubs uh, his nose against you, uh, enjoying your attention, uh, and he says uh, he gives you the notion of a couple of hours. Okay. And did it see you what direction she he, went in? He points at the double doors. Okay. Um, uh, then I'll turn back to the rest and say, do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going inside now. And then I'll go over and open the double doors. Okay. Oh, well. As you I, open I the, uh, the double okay. doors, a sword point touches <laughs> your throat just here. And you see a dashing woman strides outside. You immediately identify her. And she says, You have been calling my name, but who the hell are you? And this is where we'll stop. <laughs> um, can I ask a question? Well, yes. we're about that book. So we've got the holy book uh, from Van Richten uh, that we've been reading at night. Uh, um, yeah, a prayer book, I believe it was. Yeah, Aramil. Yeah. Aramil and I. Just a prayer book. Yeah. Um, have we found anything? Is it? Uh, it's just a book of prayers, I assume. You're asking me or Ar Aramil? Yes, yes, you. Yes. Yeah. I, don't, I assume Aramil doesn't know any um, more than you do. Yes, <laughs> unless you want to inspect it uh, further. Aramil did inspect it, but didn't find anything interesting there. Oh, what kind of a roll should I make? Um, you can make a wisdom perception roll or investigation. I think perception is, is best. Okay. 15. Um, nope, you don't find anything uh, specifically okay. interesting there. Okay, um, so while I'm reading it, though, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically looking for prayers of forgiveness and anything that might mention anything like a crusader or something like that. I'm okay. clearly just upset about this anger that I'm feeling in me and wondering if Balder has set me on a path of crusader or something else. I don't know. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to say or uh... nope okay um, great okay this is it then oh. yeah <laughs> okay uh, I, will, I will send you the the van Rixton's uh, 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 page uh, I'll probably post it in the blog so you can read it if you want um, okay cool awesome great uh, so thank you very much <laughs> and we'll find out if you're in hell or not uh, next meeting uh, fi five Wait, minutes uh, into the first meeting in <laughs> yeah. sweet <laughs> of course this is hell where else did you go <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know the do happy like... hunting grounds yeah, but, but that's do just anything a, wrong. a boring place like not for me <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure as a ranger, I would love it there also, but that would just be yes. boring, like going out, hunting, having a good time. I don't know what you did before I met you, but I was a good person. <laughs> <laughs> so was I.
<laughs> some of the time. Yeah, I was totally like, it's funny because if you look at my, you know, my ideals and my bonds, I'm all about helping and giving and super kind. And uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, I me love too, how me too. I love how this this world has brought out the orc in him, the worst parts of him, and now he yeah, goes into rage these rages and kills people. And the <laughs> conflict of that, the internal conflict of that, is I'm just having a great time with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gary's uh, internal conflict now about like because he's he's still he's less naive now after this session after like <laughs> you know starting that pact and just seeing the pos the potential of like horribleness that could happen from it, um, that he thought he was in control of. I can't wait to um, come up with something else to make him show that conflict. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm just glad I didn't kill the baby. So. <laughs> Yo, thank God. Thank God. I'd have had to, yeah. We'd have had to fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I do have a question. El Kalar now, like, uh, is, does it have stats that I can write down? or? Um, we'll wait and see. God, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun. The role-playing yeah. of this is uh, excellent. I'm awesome. having a great time. Awesome. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm enjoying it. Uh, also, it's our tenth uh, session, so uh, nice. yeah, yeah that's, cool. that's, nice. that's very nice. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll fade out, uh, fade to black with uh, both Enoch and Aramil scratching their wounds, uh, uh, their wolf yeah. bites. Uh, ah. Yeah. Well, there's no full moon here. It's always <laughs> yeah. dark, and so yeah. that's it's fine. Point. It's fine. Oh, that's fine. Can you, can you actually become a werewolf in uh, in D and D? Yeah. Yes. You can. Can you can you summon your werewolfness, or do you just turn into it when when not it's full moon? Not if you're cursed. I don't think. I think. Yeah. You're out. Uh, you have no control. If you're born with it, I believe you can choose. But I oh. I, I I had a player who got infected. I know how it works. Out. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, won't say, I won't say. I won't say. Yeah, I will resist the urge to read my monster's manual. Okay, oh, great. Yeah. And, great. And I did modify it a little, but still, yeah. I had a fun. He had fun also. Yeah, that's okay. There's an abbey of what Saint Markovia over in Kresk. We may have to make a trip over there and get some curses lifted. Yeah, they would have to level up and learn to remove curse spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty handy, probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm super glad I, I multi-classed into barbarian because because of the whole internal conflict thing, but on the other hand, being a fifth level cleric would probably be helpful. <laughs> yep. Yeah, maybe that was a way to get a dagger away from him, like remove yeah. curse and then pull the dagger yeah. out of his hand. Normal, normally it's, you not an, it, it's not an evil dagger, item. man. You don't, yeah, it's, not, <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not cursed, it's just sent. Uh -huh. It's, it's right. not it's cursed, just it's just sent. It's, it's not bad, it's just misunderstood. It's not bad, yeah. It's helping Enoch me. is fairly certain that, that you have, you're not in control of yourself anymore. I love this. Yeah. Oh no, I and Gary's gonna defend him. You, I, I didn't tell any one of you about the blood thing, by the way. I just yeah, told yeah, you I did, yeah. that the guy sent you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and now you're you're burning things with green fire. So <laughs> I'm drawing and, upon its power, man. And yeah, waking up <laughs> naked in a winer. In the... <laughs> no, that, 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 that was I'm just a drinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What what was dead times? <laughs> but the I fact don't... that we didn't know if you killed the baby or not that's worrisome enough. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, I'm, drink, I mean, drinking does thing... that. The, the, yeah. the thing with the goat and everything, that was just a one-time thing. It was just... Uh -huh. uh -huh. That's what they all say. <laughs> just a one-time thing. I'll never do it again. I can uh -huh. stop at any time. Yeah, I'm, I'm in to total it. control. We're going to have to have an intervention here. I'm going to sit you down, I'm gonna put the dagger on the table and tell you how we feel. Mm. You, well, you have Gary on your side. This awesome. is Gary? I... I liked Gary. <laughs> well, <laughs> Gary is yeah, he, he has to defend. He has to defend um, Vicero's like dark magic stuff because if if Vicero is wrong, then Gary's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Awesome. Can't wait to next uh, session. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm checking Thanks, out. Bye. See you yeah, in two, two weeks' time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye bye. Good day, everybody. Or good night, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And am I the only one who wants to say shout green flame whenever he does the green <laughs> no, flame? No, 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 that's green fine. Flame. Everybody. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just crying in my heart. Green flame? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
See you. Have yeah. a good one. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Right. Yeah. And have a good birthday you. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Happy, yeah, happy, yeah. Happy, happy birthday. birthday you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, take uh, 10,000 XP for your birthday, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Will do. Level up. Right. Bye. Bye.